Hello, in this video we're going to talk about radicals. In chemistry, a radical is any species that has an unpaired electron. You encountered some things that are actually radicals in general chemistry, uh, like the bromine atom. The bromine atom has seven uh, valence electrons, which, because there's an uneven number of them, one of them will have to be unpaired. And so, uh, in the context of, of radical chemistry, we're going to refer to the bromine atom as the bromine radical, but it's a bromine atom. There are other compounds uh, that have stable radicals uh, like nitric oxide. I had the wrong Lewis structure there for a moment, so, so I apologize. Here's the correct Lewis structure for nitric oxide. Uh, nitric oxide, nitrogen has five electrons, oxygen has six valence electrons, so the compound has 11, uh, and because it has 11, one of them has to be unpaired, and that unpaired electron ends up on nitrogen. Mostly in, in their discussion of organic chemistry, or radicals in organic chemistry, we're going to talk about carbon radicals, uh, species that have an unpaired electron, or in a carbon atom, like the methyl radical shown here. An important feature of radicals, but radicals are often uncharged. They don't have formal charges. If we count up the electrons attached uh, or associated with the carbon uh, using the general chemistry kind of way of determining formal charge, we'd have one electron from each of the three bonding pairs plus this one non-bonding electron that methyl or that carbon atom in the methyl radical has four electrons associated with it, and carbon has four valence electrons when it's you know in its atomic form. So, carbon radicals are not charged species. This is in uh, this is this is a little bit different than the other two types of uh, species that have three bonds to carbon, and I'm going to contrast the, the structure of the carbon radical to the carbocation uh, and the, the carbanion here in, in a moment. So it's helpful to show you know, the difference between the carb carbocation and the carbanion. The carbocation has three bonds, no lone pairs, and a positive charge, and the carbanion has three bonds one lone pair and a negative charge. Carbocation. Oops. Carbanion. There we go. So very quickly, we talk about the structure of radicals. Um, at the top here, I have the, the structure of a carbocation. Since it's only has three electron domains, three bonds, no lone pairs. Uh, the carbocation is trigonal planar, sp2 hybridized at, at with an empty p orbital. The carbanion has that filled sp3 orbital uh, and, and it has trigonal pyramidal geometry. It has four bonding domains, three bonds, one lone pair. Um, the radical, which is a little bit different, has three bonds and one electron. You might expect it to be intermediate in structure between uh, the trigonal planar carbocation and the trigonal pyramidal uh, carbanion, and it is. It just kind of takes on the shallow trigonal pyramidal geometry. And it can interconvert, so it can flip back and forth, and this is really only of consequence when we're talking about chirality, which we're not going to do very much, but it's, it's, it's an interesting thing that radicals can do. It's important, uh, for, for, it's important for the stability of radicals to uh, understand that radicals are electron deficient species. So, uh, like carbocations, uh, the carbon atom in the center of the carbon radical doesn't have as many electrons as it likes. It doesn't have a full octet. So radicals are going to be stabilized by the same things that stabilize carbocations. And so I have a comparison uh, for carbocations. Uh, carbocations are stabilized by induction. Uh, alkyl groups have electron density tied up in their carbon-hydrogen bonds that can be donated by induction, in other words, through the bond structure, uh, 
uh, to the car to part to slightly stabilize that carbocation. And the more substituted the, the carbocation is, the more stable it is. So primary carbocations are less stable than secondary, which are less stable than tertiary. Uh, and addition, at swapping out the hydrogens increases stability. The same thing happens in radicals. The methyl radical is the least stable or is one of the least stable carbon radicals. Primary radical is a little bit more stable. We swapped out one hydrogen for a methyl group. As you swap out other hydrogens for methyl groups, the stability of the radical increases because the methyl groups have electron density that can stabilize that, that you know, electron deficient center. Uh, another way you can look at the stability of radicals is by the strength of the carbon-hydrogen bond. The amount of energy required to break that carbon-hydrogen bond in, and leave the radical behind. It would take 435 kilojoules per mole to break a carbon-hydrogen bond in methane to make the methyl radical. And that number steadily decreases until you get to 381 in 2-methyl propane to make the tertiary radical. In addition, just like carbocations, uh, radicals are stabilized by resonance. Uh, and resonant stabilized radicals are even more stable than tertiary radicals. The carbon hydrogen bond in uh, one propene that would make the resonance stabilized allyl radical only requires 364 kilojoules per mole to, uh, to break that bond. It's worth noting that vinyl radicals are less stable than primary radicals. And so a vinyl radical, we're talking about an unpaired electron on an sp2 hybridized carbon. That carbon hydrogen bond is significantly uh, harder to break than the carbon hydrogen bond, even in methane. Uh, the bond association energy for this vinyl radical is 464 kilojoules per mole. So we're not ever going to be talking about this kind of radical, at least in the current context. Allyl radicals, yes. I'm going to go put the word allyl over here. You remember allyl refers to when something is on a carbon atom neighboring an alkene. In the next video, we're going to talk more about resonance stability of radicals and then how to draw resonance structures for radicals and introduce you a little bit to radical electron moving and radical mechanism arrows. Thank you for watching.